Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Snow, and today I'm here with a very simple explanation of a very simple activation delay code that you can use practically anywhere. Um, this is a part of a, a bit of a series I think I'm going to try and make on some of the more basic Funky Trees applications that you can really use and kind of learn how exactly Funky Trees are going to work through these examples. So, first of all, um, here's the code we're going to look at today. So this particular piece of code is useful for any sort of activation delay, whether you're going for this type of detacher delay, which uh, really does have a inbuilt uh, delay system. But for example, if you wanted to use it on say a parachute, which doesn't have inbuilt delay, then this style of code will be ideal for that purpose. Uh, let's look at how you want to use this code. Uh, code. So the first portion we're going to change is the delay time. So uh, T here is any number, you, uh, you can change it to any number. Uh, if you wanted to say a delay time of 5 seconds, then you would change T to 5, and it would read 1 over 5. Next up is obviously the activation group number. This isn't really hard. Um, for example, if I wanted my whole delay script to operate on um, activation group 1, then I'll just write activate 1. Uh, if it was activation group 2, it would be activate 2, and so on. Not too hard. Um, okay, so here is everything um, in one piece. Uh, these are the only two items you need to change at all. The rest of it is just fully there. Um, this is a very simple piece of code you can use for any sort of activation delay. Now I'm going to start explaining how the, uh, this particular piece of code works. The first function we want to look at is the smooth function. So out of the three functions used in this uh, particular piece of code, I, I definitely can say with confidence that the smooth function is one of the most important functions you, we have at all in Funky Trees. So the smooth function uh, typically denoted smooth um, x comma r it's a function that can throttle the output of its input. So input in this case would be some expression x. So when x changes, it can only change at a unit of uh, rate of maximum r units per second. So for example, in the example below, we can see smooth activate 1, 0.5. Uh, in this case, even uh, when activate 1 changes, instead of the change being instant, well, you're going to have activate one change at maximum a value of 0.5 units per second which will give you some sort of delay but this is not the exact delay we want um, so this is just an example of what we're going to have the next function we're going to look at is the clamp 01 function this is also a very very useful function and a very versatile function um, because of its particular nature in that the clamp 01 function restricts its output um, to a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Uh, the output can be anything between zero and one, but not beyond either bound. So you can see, look at the examples below. Uh, a clamp of one's uh, 999 will still be equal to one because the maximum is one. And the clamp of one negative 999 will still be equal to zero because the minimum uh, output of clamp of one is still zero and clamp 01, 0 0.5 will be 0 0.5 because anything between 0 and 1 is fine. So the final function used in our particular activation delay code is the floor function. The floor function always rounds down as input to the nearest integer, never down, uh, never, uh, it's always down and never up. Uh, for example, um, look at these three examples, um, floor uh, value of 1 will be equal to 1. Uh, floor 0. Point, uh, it's just floor 1.999, no matter how close it comes to the next number, we're just going to chop that decimal and place straight off and it's going to be equal to 1. Floor 0. 0.0001, uh, it's never going to go up, uh, it's going to go straight down, we just chop those decimals off and become 0. So to examine how this all works in tandem in this particular piece of code we have here, um, initially we have activate x that is clamped, uh, to 0 and 1. Uh, so it, initially it would have a value of 0. And when we decide to press 
activate your group X. Say, let's say I, if, if you're taking, for example, activate one, and when I press on um, activation group one, it's gonna be zero initially, but when I press it, I'm gonna go one when it's active. Now, the smooth function looks at that. It's, it looks at the fact that the clap portion goes from zero to one. And instead of letting it jump straight from zero to one, it's gonna restrict that change to a rate of one over t units per second. Now, all this is happening um, within that uh, floor function. So the floor function looks at all this stuff happening, but it it's, it doesn't care until a integer value has been achieved. So in this case, um, since we started at zero, uh, no matter what value it is between zero and one, uh, if it's a decimal, it's just gonna straight down to uh, zero. So it stays at zero until the smooth function finally stops changing and has finished changing to one. And since it's achieved the integer value one, that's when the floor function will finally output the value one. So in a graphical perspective, this is how we should look at it. The innermost portion here on the left, uh, the clamp zero one, activate X, it's gonna start at zero. When you press it, it's immediately gonna jump to, immediately gonna jump to one. Well, next, uh, we have a smooth around that, and smooth is gonna not let it jump instantly from zero to one, but instead let it go smoothly, uh, there's a namesake, uh, at a linear rate of one over t units per second. So it's gonna go like that. And the floor function, you're gonna see that the output of smooth is a decimal, so it's going to go round that all down to zero. And when it when the smooth function finally reaches a value of one, it's going to say, "Okay, um, we can now finally be one, and we finally get a zero uh, a zero to one at the end." Meaning that over the course of the entire delay in the smooth function, we're going to have zero from the start to the end of the delay. Where the end of the delay. At, finally, at the end of the delay, it's going to become the desired value of 1. So this is how this particular activation delay code is designed. There are some other um, styles of activation delays out there, but I find that this is the most generally most uh, useful of them because it is considerably shorter, it never breaks, and the uh, structuring of it, it is extremely simple and straightforward. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess we should see it in action in game. So we're here back in the Simple Planes Designer. Um, so here, this particular setup I've created is to demonstrate the capabilities of this uh, activation delay script. First of all, um, this left detacher has been given an artificial uh, funky trees delay of five seconds and this right one has been given a inbuilt delay of five seconds we, uh, we should be able to see that if our um, activation delay script works properly then after we press the um, group one uh, both of these should go up at the same time so as this second one is on activation group two um, it's on the parachute to demonstrate some of the more uh, non-natural, uh, more practical applications of uh, this activation delay script. Uh, we should see that this particular par parachute goes off immediately in activation group 2, but this parachute uh, has been given a delay of 3 seconds, so we should see it go off 3 seconds after this first parachute. Alright, let's see it, everything in action. Okay, so uh, let's start off with the detacher. We should be able to see that after 5 seconds, both of these should go off. So, here we go. 2, 4, 5. We just saw that both of these went off at the same time, so it proved that, that our activation delay system worked perfectly. So, let's look at the parachutes now. We should see that the left parachute goes off immediately in activation group 2, but the right parachute 
bit later. Oops, <laughs> did not expect that. But we are probably fine, so let's try it out. As you saw, the first one goes off immediately, but this one goes off three seconds after the first one. So we can see that our activation delay system works perfectly. So this is a pretty realistic demonstration of what we can do with this particular activation delay script. Uh, script. I hope this proved useful to you. Uh, good luck on your endeavors. Thank you.